Hi everyone, Scott with Dearly Departed Tours. Very sad news when I woke up today that the singer, actor Meatloaf passed away at 74. Meatloaf, two words, Meatloaf, uh, passed away. And I guess it wasn't particularly sudden because he'd been ill for a long time, but still, uh, still, you know, unsettling and, and not nice news to wake up to. And because of social media these days, I was desperately trying to figure out a way to make it about me. And I don't have a photograph of myself with meatloaf to, to, to post, unfortunately, but I do have my book. Rocky Horror from Concept to Cult. I uh, interviewed so many people that were actually in the movie and had a couple of stories, a very interesting story in particular about Meatloaf to share uh, with you about Meatloaf actually and his stuntman during the filming of the Rocky Horror Picture Show. So I decided to dust off my Rocky Horror files and meet Loaf. The original stage production of the Rocky Horror Show debuted in June of 1973 in the theater upstairs at the prestigious Royal Court Theater in London. The theater upstairs often staged more offbeat shows for short runs. The Rocky Horror Show originally had a six-week booking. Eddie was a character in the original stage production and was portrayed by Patty O'Hagan. Eddie emerges during the show from a Coca-Cola cooler and sings the song Whatever Happened to Saturday Night or Hoppatootie. And Eddie sings this song to the character Columbia. Now here's the backstory. Eddie was a delivery boy. It's not made crystal clear, nothing really is, how he and Frankenfurter became involved. But Frankenfurter was obsessed with Eddie. It's not clear if their relationship was ever physical or even romantic, but certainly Frank wanted it that way. We do know that Frankenfurter became very jealous when Eddie fell for Frank's groupie, Columbia. So Columbia turns her affections to Eddie. And Frank, out of jealousy, decides to cut half of Eddie's brain out and use it to create his own object of affection and obsession, Rocky Horror. Rocky Horror is the first and last name of Frank's blonde, muscly creature. Frank was hoping by using Rocky and Eddie's brain together, he would create a single creature who would love him back. The success of the London production led to a Los Angeles production staged at the Roxy Theater on the Sunset Strip. It was produced by Lou Adler, who owned the Roxy Theater, and the only cast member who was asked to come along was Tim Curry. Cast as Eddie in that production was the late, as of today, the late great Meat Loaf. Meat Loaf went with the cast to stage the disastrous New York production at the Belasco, then to London to make the film version of the Rocky Horror Show called The Rocky Horror Picture Show. It was made at Bray Studios in the neighboring Oakley Court Hotel. It was filmed from October 21st, 1974 through December 19th. Meatloaf's scenes were filmed in early November. Going back to the plot of the movie... When Eddie misbehaves by upstaging Frank in the laboratory, Frank decided to take matters into his own hands and kill Eddie with a pickaxe, ultimately serving him for dinner later that evening. Frank and Rocky have a wedding ceremony. Now later, when the creation Rocky turns his affection towards the character Janet, Frank says, And my children turn on me. Rocky's behaving just the way that Eddie did. Do you think I made a mistake splitting his brain between the two of them? My friend Sadie still had her original call sheets from filming the Rocky Horror Picture Show, and using them I was able to isolate the dates of the filming. On the week of November 4th through the 6th, 1974, on Stage 1 at Bray Studios, the interior laboratory set was being used for filming the music numbers Charles Atlas Song, Part 1, The Sword of Damocles, and whatever happened to Saturday night, that was Meatloaf's big solo in the movie. On Monday, November 4th, scheduled were those three songs to be filmed. It stated that a Harley-Davidson motorbike was to be on set at 8.30 a.m. For our purposes specifically, also due on set at 8.30 were Meatloaf and his stand-in, Eric Kent. The special effects needed that day? Ice segments and iced motorbike. Now on Tuesday, the call time was 8.30 again. This time, Ken Shepard's name is on the call sheet. Ken wasn't Meatloaf's stand-in, but was his stunt double for actually operating the motorcycle. 
Though the actual motorcycle driving portion in the finished film is only about 40 seconds long, during the filming, two accidents occurred. While appearing to look like Meatloaf, Meatloaf's stunt double, Ken Shepard, made two circles in the lab while the actors who played Transylvanians dove from the balcony to avoid being run over. The balcony wasn't that wide. Here are first-hand recollections that were told to me from actors who were there. Now keep in mind, the accounts vary. Some of them recall it being Meatloaf driving the bike, but you can't blame them. I was asking them to remember a specific day of a job they had 25 years earlier. Christopher Biggins. I think he cut himself on the motorbike while crashing through that glass. We all stopped filming for the day, and I think he had stitches. Gay Brown. I remember he had to drive up the ramp, across, and down again. It caused quite a lot of trouble. It was bloody hard to do. He wasn't much of a motorbike rider, really. I don't think it was a serious accident. Now, Sadie Corey tells me there was almost another accident. Meatloaf had to go up the balcony on his motorcycle. We were to jump off onto mattresses. Near the mattresses was an iron tank, and when we did it, a Transylvanian jumped off too soon. We did rehearse it, but she got it wrong. I missed the tank by that much. It was Fran Fullenweider. I was shaken and furious with her. She just didn't time it properly. Lindsay Ingram recalls, In the scene in the lab, Meatloaf's stuntman crashed. Another stuntman ran to help him and broke his leg en route, one running to help the other. They were both carried out in the end. Now, according to the website RockyHorrorWiki.org, I think this is the most accurate account. Ken Shepard drove the motorcycle through the scene, including riding up and down the steep ramps. At some point, the bike fell off the top tier and landed upside down, pinning Ken underneath it. Meatloaf managed to lift the heavy bike just enough to get it off him. Although Ken didn't move for a while, he eventually opened his eyes and told everyone he was okay. On Wednesday the 6th, there is no reference to the accident, but Ken Shepard's name is no longer on the call sheet, and along with ice and iced motorbike, a special wheelchair was due on the set. Now Terry Acklin Snow, the film's art director, told me, The close-up scenes of Eddie's face are actually of Meatloaf being pushed around in a wheelchair with a windshield and handlebars. Meatloaf and the motorcycle were covered in hot candle wax that we sprayed on to look like snow. The biggest thing was the wheelchair. We sprayed it with liquid cement. Now back to RockyHorrorWiki.org. To get the shots of Eddie riding the bike up and down the ramps, the crew rigged a wheelchair that would hold a set of handlebars and a motorcycle windshield in front of the camera facing Meatloaf as the crew pulled it up and down the ramps. Unfortunately, as they were in the middle of shooting, the wheelchair hit a ridge, sending Meatloaf flying towards the floor and shattering both the camera and the windshield. Ken Shepard tried to catch him in the process, but the ramp caught Ken's leg and caused a serious fracture. Meatloaf also suffered a deep cut on his head. On the call sheet for Friday, along with iced motorbike, was the note, First Aid to Stand By. Transylvanian Henry Wolf recalled working with that stuntman on a different job later on. He asked him, were they grateful to you for saving the day? Not at all. Did they pay you any extra? No. Did anyone visit you in the hospital? No. He got no thanks, just a broken ankle. A sad story. Ken Shepard went on to do stunt work in films like American Werewolf in London, For Your Eyes Only, and The Spy Who Loved Me. He died on January 6, 2017, in Hertfordshire, England, at the age of 83. Meatloaf, as we know, went on to have huge success recording music and appearing in films. He died on Thursday, January 20, 2022, in Austin, Texas. He was 74 years old. I want to thank the people who are sponsoring my YouTube channel by the link below, Patreon or PayPal. Especially, I want to uh, thank Simon Gandossi, Jason Thomas, Latoya Thomas, Dwayne Brantley, Rosemary Kinsella, and Noreen Gudis. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for your attention and your support. And until next time.